Watch Mr. Wizard. That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he shows them the magic and mystery of science in everyday living. Mr. Wizard. Oh, hi, Irene. Come on in. Hi. Hello. What are you doing? Let's well, see my little tanks. They're so cute. Aren't they? They're, they're very easy to make. As a matter of fact. How do they run? Well, you'll see later because I'll take one apart and show you how to make it so that you can make them at home. They're quite easy to make. Okay. And you can make them have fun with your sister. All right? Because okay. today we're going to investigate springs. Mm -hmm. What is a spring? Uh, let's see. Uh, it's a wire or something that's, well, round. Oh, you can't use your fingers. <laughs> oh, all right. Like you can't use your Circular. finger to just buy the spiral staircase. No, same idea. Circular. Something Circular. Like uh, bouncy, springy. <laughs> well, how about this? Will this uh, qualify as yes, a spring? Yes, that's a spring. Yeah. Well, now there are lots of different kinds of springs. Maybe a better definition might be something. Uh, these key things keep <laughs> going away. Well. A better definition might be um, a machine for storing up energy. Does that make sense? I don't know. You've never thought about a spring that way? No. Well, that's kind of the way scientists think about it. Do you think that it's true that a spring is a machine for storing up energy? Uh, first, before you answer it, what's energy? Oh, th well, the ability to do work, motion, or right. something like that. You make something move or accomplish some work, why that's energy. Okay, now, is a spring a method of doing that? All right, let's, let's examine some ordinary springs around the house, and you see if it is true that they store up energy. Okay. Now, as a, an example of energy, is there energy in tea? No. <laughs> well, would you get me a couple of tea bags and let's see. Okay. Right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tea bags. Definitely energy in there, isn't it? In <laughs> fact, there's one still stuck in there. Now, oh, there sure is. But why, why did I fool you? Remember, the, I fooled you with this before, but I put it in a different yes. can this time. Why did I want to fool you with this uh, snake that jumps out? Well, isn't this a spring? Yes, inside there, there's a spring. And wasn't there energy stored up? What happened? You said energy was motion. Didn't something happen when you opened the can? Yes, they it just jumped out. popped out. Okay, so obviously there was energy stored in the spring. Uh-huh. Inside there, there's a spring. <laughs> now, in order to put the energy in the spring, you squeezed it together. Can you think of any other springs around the house that you put the energy into it by squeezing it together? Silence. Nothing. You sit on them. You sleep on them. Oh, it, well, chairs and bed. <laughs> like that. That's way. Well, this is the way some of them look in, in some kind of chairs. Uh -huh. And uh, you compress this one just like that, see, when you sit on you it. sit on it. And when you get off, the okay, energy is released. Yeah, it's bounced back, back up. So that's why it feels nice and soft. Uh -huh. So now notice that we put the energy into this kind of a spring by moving the two ends towards the middle. Yes. Pushing. Mm -hmm. How about this one now? Here's another kind of spring, and in this case, it's a uh, wire like the other one, but notice in this case, I put this rod inside and get it hooked down here, and I now can pull. And you're stretching it, right? And I'm stretching or pulling it, yeah. Now, if I hold it here like this, is there energy stored in that spring? What's going to happen if I let go? Is there going to be motion? Might be. Yeah, it might, might very well be. Oh, well, maybe like in the snakes it'll move? It'll move, but this time, notice the center of the spring is here, and I move the ends away. Oh, you're pulling it away pulling from, from the away. center. In fact, watch, if I take this and hold it like this, kind of like a bow, I can uh, very definitely... Yeah. <laughs> definitely moves, doesn't it? Sure does. Okay, now this is one I kind of put together. Can you think of any springs around the house where you store energy into them by pulling the two ends away from the middle? How about a screen door? You know how it opens? Screen door spring. When you open the screen door, what happens? Well, it stretches. It stretches like this. Wow, that's a strong. It's a strong one. And then what happens when you let go of the screen door? Well, it goes back together yeah. quickly. Your mother says, please don't stand or slam mm. the door. <laughs> and of course, you're storing up the energy, aren't you? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, that's the second uh, type. 
Now, carefully look over there. Uh-oh. Because there's the third type. A rat trap. A rat trap, that's right. Now, is there energy stored in there? Oh. Is it going to do anything when you release oh, it? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> in fact, well. you, you're uh, kind of hesitant to even come close to it because you know there's so much energy mm -hmm. stored up into it. Where is it stored? Don't use your finger here. Use that stick. All right. How about a... No, uh, no trace that right there in the middle. See right that there. coil thing right there? Oh, there's the spring. Okay, now fire the trap first. Wow. <laughs> I broke it right off. It's broke it. So there's definitely uh, work done. It sure there. is. Now, look at that spring right there. Well, it looks as if it's twirling. That's right, it's twisting. Twisting. Yeah, so this kind of time you can store up energy in this kind of a spring by twisting the end. Ooh. Now, where? Do you want to draw that again? Okay. <laughs> All right. Untwist it. All right. Boy, oh boy. Now, where around the house do you have a spring that you can store up the energy by twisting? Mousetraps? <laughs> yeah, mousetraps. Just sort of a little version of that. Mm. You mentioned screen door before. Uh-huh. Oh, the, the hinge? Yes, in the hinge of certain kinds of screen doors, you know, oh. that close well, automatically? Yes. There is a spring inside the hinge. There's a spring. Can you see it there? Mm. Uh -huh. Oh, and it's twirling? It's, it's twirling twisting. like in the mousetrap. Yeah. So here's the door open, and when you want it to close, the door closes. Oh, right just there. like yeah. the rat trap. Yeah. Mm. So there's the third kind. Well, now we've seen, what, three kinds. How do you store up energy? Well, by taking it, uh, pushing it away from the center. Mm -hmm. Pulling, yeah. Pulling it, pushing it closer to the center. Yeah, pushing, compressing. And with the twisting. A twisting. Now, what are... Um, what are these springs made of, anyway? Well, steel. Why iron. steel? It's springy. <laughs> yeah, it's springy. It has that characteristic, you know. You can make springs out of it because it's springy. How about other things? Can you make springs out of other materials other than metal? Most people, you know, just think of these things. Yet, if a, if a spring is a machine in which you store up energy, you should be able to use other materials. Mm -hmm. What's springy besides steel? Come over here, I'll give you... Give you a hint. Okay. Uh oh. There. I know what that is. Yeah. Now you, I, yeah. You know, already, I can see you're a little worried look on your face mm. because you know there's energy stored up in this thing. Yes, aren't you? this sure yeah. certainly is. And when I release it, the energy is released, and whatever I was holding in here gets fired across. Mm. So is this uh, uh, something like a spring? Is there energy stored up there? Yes, it is. And if so, like which spring is it? I think like the pulling one. Like the one. pull, that's right, because I'm moving the two ends away from the center. So yes. Okay. There it goes. Now, where around the house, you don't have slingshots, I assume. No. Uh, where around the house do you use rubber by stretching it like that to um, store up energy? <laughs> How about those rubber bands? Well, like this rubber band yeah. that you have stretched around. Yeah, the every time you put a rubber band around something, you're using it the, oh, the, yeah, to right, store up energy. Because if you cut it, what happens? Oh, then it pops and goes flying off. off yeah. So there is a good example now of doing the same sort of storing of energy, but this time with a rubber spring. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the other one? A push. Yes. Where do you store energy in rubber by pushing? Do you remember the, the clue that I gave you when, I, when we looked at steel springs? Something you just sit on. Yeah. Oh, well, the foam rubber, yeah. you know, and things like that. The foam sofa, rubber so like this, yeah. See, you, you push it towards the center. Mm -hmm. And then when you get up... When you get up, you can see it, it springs yes. back up again. In fact, these are used in the same way that the steel springs are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, how about other ways, other than in cushions? There are a couple of other ways that in which you use rubber, squeeze it in order to store up energy. I'll tell you right now, it's a hard one because the storage takes place very fast and the release takes place very fast. See if I you don't can. Know. You don't, huh? Hmm. Well, now you think. You think for a while. While I amuse myself. Oh no! Yeah. Not that. Yeah, this. You mean well? There's uh, like foam rubber or something inside. Mm, well, in this case, it's. Uh, they look like. Have you ever cut a golf ball apart? No. Well, <laughs> if you cut it apart, you take the inside. Looks like all kinds of rubber bands wound round, round, real yeah. tight. Yeah. So it's all full of 
hard sort of rubber inside, and that makes it very hard. What happens now when the ball, when you throw the ball down, hit it on the floor, the sidewalk? It comes back up. Why? <laughs> well, yeah. it must be energy or yeah. something. Energy is stored up when you bounce it down in order to come back up, and it's stored here in this rubber ball because it is elastic and works like a spring. Now, the reason why you probably hadn't thought about it is because when you throw a hard rubber ball like that, you don't see what happens because it happens here so fast. But if what so, happens? Well, it must be compressed. Oh, yes. It exactly. must be pushed up, mm -hmm. and at the moment then when the, when the energy from the ball is now transferred entirely to, to the floor or into the compression, why, it now springs back up mm -hmm. again, but you can't see it. No, you can't. No, but I, I think maybe you've seen pictures uh, of balls, haven't you seen, well, like on against a tennis racket or something where they're real flat? Well, of course, they're filled, they're filled with something else, too. They're not filled with hard rubber. Well, let's see if we can do an experiment. Uh, here's a piece of, of um, hard wood. Mm -hmm. And if I hold it up like this so that I can put the ball down on it, I want you to see the area of the ball that's touching the, the uh, paper. How much would you, would you say about? Well, I don't think it's very much. It's a very tiny little surface. Quarter of an inch, maybe? Yes, sir. I uh, guess well, so. you see on the on the ball itself those little dimples. It's maybe the area around one dimple. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. maybe about a quarter of an inch circle. Okay, now that's with the ball just resting. Now, if I put this down on the floor and I throw the ball at it hard, it should bounce back up again. Mm -hmm. But at the moment when it hits like this, if it is true, it's flattened out. It should leave a mark because this is is uh, carbon paper. See, and underneath there oh. is some white paper. Uh-huh, so we'll see it. We'll see, all right? If. If. Now you want to help me catch the ball? Because I'm going to throw oh. it as hard as I can. All right, in order I'll to. Try. Okay, I hope I don't, don't miss it. Ready? Ready. Wow. <laughs> now let it fall. <laughs> oh, dangerous. There. Now. You can see right there on the carbon paper where it hit. Yes. Oh, boy, it's more than one little circle. Yes, one little circle. Now, we originally estimated that maybe about about that much, or yes. a circle about that big, was the amount that was touching. Why is this circle so big? We the ball that. must have flattened out. Huh? That's right. When yeah. it hit, it must have hit. flattened. And it's because it flattened like that that it now was able to spring back and push the, the ball oh. out of the end. And, of course, the harder you push it, you know, throw it on the floor, the more it flattens, the mm -hmm. more it bounces up. Okay, that's uh, rubber pushed together like the spring. We still have one more method of storing energy in a spring. What was the third one? Oh, the, the twisting. Yes, the twisting. So now, how do you twist rubber and store up energy? Well, I, don't, I couldn't think of many, ma many ways except this little tank. Oh. So uh, let me show you how you make one of those little tanks. I had tanks. an idea how to make it. Oh. What do you think's inside, then? A rubber band, and you twist it all yes, up. Yes, you twist it all up. And there's the twisting. So here's how you make it. Now, you take an ordinary spool, mm -hmm. and with a saw or a knife, cut notches all around the edge here. These are to, to make treads or tracks, so it'll have good traction. You also cut a notch across there so that you can put a little match stick in it. See oh, you? yes. So that match won't turn like that. Mm -hmm. Now you put a rubber band in there and pull it through over to the other side, and put it around a candle. This size candle works particularly well. Well, why do you need a candle? Well, ordinarily, if you just had a piece of wood in here and you let it go, it would just spin around real fast. But the candle is just sticky enough to make the rubber band unwind slowly. Oh. So you see, if you wind it up this way, the candle unwinds. Yes. Now, if you prevent the candle from unwinding, the spool will unwind. Oh. And that's how <laughs> the thing works. This is a very, very old toy. I made these when I was a boy. Really? I, won't, I won't mention how long ago. <laughs> uh, we used to make them this way, too, and that is to do the same thing on one side, but on the other, cut off a piece of candle and mm -hmm. put a match stick in it. Oh, that should work the same way. Same idea, uh, but you have to cut the candle in half, and it's easy to break the candle. You know, this little piece here uh -huh. is cracked quite easily. So this is a system that avoids that, but this will still work. Look, That's the sports well, model there. Why did this move? See, it's going, see like that? Why? Well, it's, the reason is that sometimes the spool gets going too fast. And when it does, it'll flip it all over. Oh. So then it writes itself. There's a little man in there that turns it back up. Oh, come on. <laughs> that one works quite well, though. That's the way we used to make them, but here's sort of a new, improved version. 
And you're gonna have you're gonna have battles, <laughs> line one up against the other, and make little tiny hills for them to crawl over. And why do they work now? How is the energy stored up? Because of the spring, and you're twisting I it. I twist the spring, and then it gradually is released. So will you agree now that a spring is a machine for storing up energy? Yes. It is pretty definitely is, isn't it? Yes. And the two most common types of uh, materials for making these uh, springs are? Steel you know, and rubber. Yeah. Now, there are some others. Not nearly as important in many ways, but can you think of any other materials that you use to store up energy, like in a spring? Around the house. Well, not around the house, near the house. In yeah. fact, in the garage. Something to do with the car. Yeah. All right. Uh, how about the uh, springs on the door? Well, there might be some springs to prevent it from opening too fast, but ordinarily the door doesn't spring back. It would hit you as you got in. How about the, uh, the steering wheel? Oh, how do you mean? Well, isn't... Well, when you turn it all the way one way, and then uh, when you let go, it just spins oh, back the well, other way. Well, not quite that fast, but this is because you're turning, and there's friction on the wheels to make it come back. Well, while you think, would you go back and bring that thing that's sitting on the chair over here? Would you bring it up? Uh-oh. Matter. Tires. Tires, yeah, that's right. What is it uh, about the tires that uh, you store up energy? How can you do that? Well, maybe the air. Right, the air inside is springy, isn't it? Yes, it certainly is. Yeah. In fact, this is under tension right now, like the, like the rat trap, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you know? Well, because it's blown up. Yeah, and if, and, and if we, uh, you know, put a pin on yeah. it, it'd go really If you put bang. a little pin on it, it would really go bang. So here is energy stored up inside of a, of a springy material, and in this case, you ride on it in a car, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, in the, or bicycle <laughs> tires. And, that, and you store up the energy of the impact, the bump, and then it, give it back to you slowly. All right, well, now let's prove it like we did with the rat trap. You mean break it? Well, I think if we, if we have energy stored in there, we ought to be able to get it out. Okay. That looks like a pretty good... Uh, let's use one spring to let it out. Take that little point there and um, see if there is energy stored in here. Agreed? Yes, okay. there was. Any other materials now besides air that in which you can store up energy? Well, I have a couple back here. This is one that was important uh, long ago, more than it is today. Oh, and they didn't have anything else to use? Yeah, when know? they didn't have too, too much steel and, and rubber, what, are the, what do they use? Wood. Wood, yeah. Oh, and the, the way it's bending. Yeah. Are you pulling it towards the center or away? Well, in this case, a bend, you see, is a combination of a... Of a uh, Excuse me, I'm going to point you. <laughs> of, a, of a twist, of a um, bend is a combination of a squeezing and a pulling, because one side squeezes together while the other side oh, stretches. Yes. You see. So it's a combination of both. So there's a good example. There's energy in there, and when I let go of the arrow, the energy is transferred mm -hmm. to the arrow. So the wood is also used. How about this? A fishing rod. Yeah. But what is it? Fiberglass. Oh. So that's one of the modern materials. And it that sure bends. Yeah, it bends. Because <laughs> they want to take the energy of the fish pull Mm -hmm. You know, and store it up here so that you can get it back again gradually and the line won't break. So there's another example. <laughs> well, now, we've talked about the idea that this is a, uh, that a spring is a machine for storing up energy and getting it back. When you store up a fixed amount of energy, do you get the same amount back? Pretty good I machine if you do. I don't think you do. Where do you lose it? Well, around the... In in the air, when on the way back, it it never goes back to the same place. Oh, I see. No, uh, I see what you mean, and it's true if the things are not uh, particularly uh, good uh, as far as elasticity is concerned. But fiberglass and steel and, and a lot of rubbers are, if you don't stretch them too far. The way you put it down like this, it comes back right up to exactly the same place it would be. Yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Glass also will do that. Glass rod. Uh, no, what I had in mind was that you were right on the idea that you don't get back everything that you put in. There is some friction, but not so much in the air, although that would be a factor, but the fact that you're bending the molecules, you're twisting the molecules, you're changing oh, you're the molecules. Moving them around. Yes, you're moving them around, and they rub on each other, and they cause oh. friction as they do, and therefore you'd lose some of the energy by heat. We change the heat by the friction in the molecules. And the easiest way to see that around the house is with some rubber bands. There are springs. Here. Have one for you Thank and one you. for me. If you take the rubber band and stretch it and, and pull it back and forth like this, you don't feel anything. 
No. But now put that up here by your lips and pull the rubber band fast. You feel anything? Well, it like gets a little hot. Yes, yeah, it gets a little warm. Where does that heat come from? Well, the stretching of the uh, molecules and moving them. Yeah, the moving them around. When you stretch the rubber band, you move those molecules around and uh, they give off heat. When you pull them back, they go back into their original shape and demand heat and take it from your lips oh. or from the air. In case. So there's one so way of showing it. causes a lot of heat because we can Well, not a lot, it. but some. Well, you can't feel it with your fingers because they're not sensitive. No, but we could feel mm -hmm. it over here. here. You can. So you can try that. Most people are surprised that the rubber band gives off heat yeah. when you stretch it. Now, another way, you know that spring that we were using over there was made out of steel. Yes. Uh, let's assume that this was a, a piece of a... Uh, steel spring, it's not really steel, it's more iron, but if we bend the metal, I say a little heat should be given off. And you know if you bend yes. metal here, it might get quite hot. That's in, right. In fact, look, what I'll do is bend the coat hanger like this, see, try to get it hot, and then I'll set it down here in this margin. Now, mm -hmm. notice how far it goes into the margin here? Well, just a little bit. It's, it just yeah, well, it's the weight. Uh -huh. uh huh. Yes, okay. that's right. Now I will make it go. I'll uh, bend this back and forth real fast, pretending that this was the metal in a spring. Because mm -hmm. as You're the spring goes up and down, it would, it would bend too. Now this is not really springy metal, so I'm being a little uh, cheating, just a little bit. <laughs> but I want to want you to see that heat results when you uh, stretch and bend metal. Okay. Watch. Yeah. It just melts the butter around yeah. it. Just goes right into the, the butter. See, I, and I only did it, what, five, six times? Yeah. Yes. In fact, if you try this at home, you try a piece of wire or a coat hanger like this, and you can touch it to your own skin, and it'll get so hot it'll burn you. So be really? Careful. That yeah. hot? Yes, it gets quite hot. Now, I say this is exaggerated, but that's the kind of heat that can be given off when you stretch and bend a piece of metal. So you don't get back everything. No, you don't. Well, now, the designer of modern machines, they have this problem of storing up energy all the time. And they have all kinds of choices now, how they're going to store it up. Uh, what can they do to it? Well, they can uh, use the metal, and mm -hmm. they can uh, compress it. They, they can press it, press stretch it, it, twist it, you know, and use all kinds it. of materials. So yes. I, have, I have pretended that I was a designer and designed a special candle lighter for emergency use in case the electricity goes out. So here is a Mr. Wizard uh, uh, emergency non-electric candle lighter. Oh. Here it is, right here. Yeah. Slightly big. <laughs> well, what I did was I built a machine here in which it's kind of like those pictures you see if you have to find the hidden something or other. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a machine in which you have to find the hidden energy. Oh. I have all kinds of springy things here and here to store up energy, and I used all the kind of things that we talked about. So uh, let me go around over here in the back. And you start tracing to see what's going to happen. And every time we come to some stored up energy, why well, you stop and point it out. Okay. Here's how you start it. In case the electricity goes out and you need to light the candle, see that little bolt right down there? Yes. Why well, you wiggle that bolt and take it out of the way. Just pick it out of the way. Now, don't, ooh, don't yet. Because, see what this little piece is here? That's going to be loose, isn't it then? Oh, the metal? This piece of metal right here. Yes. And that means this will be loose. You oh. see what that's connected to? Oh, it's connected to this. Oh, this is the fishing rod. Right. Oh, this is the bended. Right. So what's going to happen to the fishing rod? Oh, it'll snap back. Snap up. Okay, as it does that, notice right down here on the fishing rod is another string. Yes. And that string is connected back here to a little piece of metal that goes through one of the holes in oh. the gears of the clock. Is, that's a spring over there, isn't it? A twisted spring? Right. When you wind up the clock, you twist up a spring. So the energy is stored up in there. As the energy is released now, this is going to un is going to wind up and wind up that spring uh, string. <laughs> now, see that string goes up here. And oh, it's, it's connected to that spring uh, over there, and that's bended, right? Right. That's to take up the slack, you see. Oh. So it's going to gradually pull down in this direction until that string goes straight across here, and now it can pull on that safety pin. Oh, it, oh, can I now explain? Go ahead. What's going to happen? The now? safety pin will let go. Yes. And there's a. Um, that's a nice a pick in there. Yes. There's an ice pick. And there's a spring back here. Now, what's, what's happened to the spring? It's pulled together. Right, right? squeezed. Okay. Squeezed together. So when, when the pin goes out, what'll happen? Oh, it'll just let go and it'll, it'll push the ice pick, okay, right? Okay, now what happens to the ice pick? It goes forward through a hole here in the piece of wood. And it, well, pop. 
Oh, that's the air pressure. There's so the air, the stored air. up inside the balloon under pressure, right? So now so we have energy break. stored there. Now, see that weight? Oh, that, then that'll fall down, right? That'll fall down. That'll pull on this string here. You see that string is connected to the oh. handle of a, of a uh, train motor. You know, the wind-up uh -huh. train type? Yes. When you pull that down, the, what's There's happen? another spring. There's another a, spring. A twisted spring. Okay, mm -hmm. right. Now, that'll begin to unwind, and as it unwinds, it makes this wheel go around. Mm. That pulls on this string. Now, follow along what happens to okay. that string. And then th this spring, this weight... String, yeah. String. Yes. <laughs> ...will make this weight... Well, the whole string will go up... Yes. ...and rise, mm. and then it'll go up shorter and shorter, and then it gets pull out this... It'll pull out that... Pin. That's the other half of the safety pin. So oh. Right here. <laughs> now, that means that this is no longer held up, and you see what this is? Oh, this is a stretched rubber band. Right. That's the pull, right? Okay, so now that rubber band will try to get shorter, won't it? And then it'll get shorter. It'll get shorter. And it'll pull this down. Okay, but now look over here at the end of that. There's a match. A match. By the way, there's another little spring inside here in this battery, in the battery clip, oh. see it? Uh, so that's holding that match, and that match is touching a piece of sandpaper up here. So the match is going to go in that direction, scratch on the sandpaper, and come down here and end up at the candle. Gee. <laughs> Incidentally, there's, there's another in a piece of energy stored up right here. Friction? Uh, no, it's the match. It has chemical energy stored up into it. Oh. Well, are you ready? Let's assume that the lights have gone out, and we're now ready to turn on uh, the um, uh, special lighter. Let me check this to make sure the alarm is on. Okay, pull out that, uh, that thing. Whoops. There you go. Watch this. Well, now it's pulling. Pretty soon the pin will go up. Down. There it goes. <laughs> the balloon, now this one's going to start winding. Oh, and there it goes up. And there's your candle. Your light the candle, candle is all lighted. Right. So you see, it, it, uh, it works. Now, this is a whole kind of ridiculous thing, you know, but the idea was that you could store up energy in all kinds of different ways and get it all back. Sure I had to put it in in the first place. Now, all of this is kind of too complicated for you to build, but if you want to experiment with storing up energy, you can make that little tank, can't you? I, yes. All right, well, let's go look at it and remind you. So when you go home and show, show your sister how to make it, she'll okay. know. What do you need? You need a spool. Mm -hmm. You need a rubber band. And the Piece little of match, holes, you know. match, and a candle. And the rubber band which you twist up. And twist it. And as you do that, you're going to store up energy in this special kind of spring. And when you let go, you'll get it back again. So you see the fun, interesting things you can do when you store up energy 